part two of our interview with Gino Morelli, Morelli and Melvin. Uh, Gino, what's your website? Is it Morelli and Melvin? Morelli and Melvin dot com. Morelli Melvin dot com. With one R and two, two L's. R's. Two R's, two L's. But there's only one R on your tag. Well, I probably misspelled my name there. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So, yes, you do know how do you spell your last name. Yes. MorelliMelvin.com, a, a site that I've actually spent a lot of time on because there's a lot of fun things to look at. Yeah, um, we just redid it, too. So I know, I know. So check out MorelliMelvin.com. But uh, back to the America's Cup, uh, I'm, I assume you're going to go if it's Valencia or oh, yeah. Rosalcaima or whatever. Yeah, it should be fun, yeah. Yeah, and uh, will Pete sail on the boat as uh, crew? I, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't think so. You know, I don't, yeah. You know, between now and then, a lot, a lot of can happen. That's true. But, that's uh, true. He's been on the boat, but I, I don't think he's part of the sailing team now. Got it. Um, you talked about how exciting it is to be part of some of the innovation that's yeah. going on, and obviously this this process with the millions and millions thrown at it is going to develop all sorts of new technology. Yeah. What are the most interesting, let's say, three pieces of technology that you can talk about that might trickle down into the world of multi hulls and general sailing? Well, on the performance side of it, uh, the curved dagger board business is being. Uh, you know, we're able to research and do a lot of interesting things with that and how you build them, how you support them, how you tune them. Their effect on the boat is, is really the cool thing is the curved daggerboard business. And that'll probably influence a lot of our little boats. I think we'll see ACATs with, with uh, I mean, we've seen them yeah. before, but it turned out, you know, I mean, Darren and Glenn would go and win with yeah. straight daggerboard. So, well, uh, we're starting to figure this out. In fact, uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but we've got a new beach cat coming with them. Wow. But you can't say what class? I can't say it's from Nacra. All right. All right. Good enough. I'm I'd looking. Prob I'd probably get my hands slapped. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, when, when do you think you'll be able to tell us more about that? Oh, you have to call Nacra. <laughs> I'll give him a shout. Call Jack. I'll give him Jack a shout. We got to talk about the next uh, uh, Tybee anyway. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. So, curve boards, what else? Uh, well, for us, the CFD, Computer Fluid Dynamics. And the, and the FEA, the finite element analysis that we've been exposed to on a much higher level, has been really good and will influence our future designs. Um, what about the power? Well, obviously they're powerful, but you know the PlayStation. What about thing, the what about the powered? What about using power? Oh, powered winches. Yeah, powered winches, hydraulics. What do you think about that? And then uh, is it something that you want to bring in and? And get and, and 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 develop for, for use in in regular sailing boats. Oh, I see it perfectly adaptable to recreational sailboats for sure. Like our gunboat line, our MM65 line, or uh, we got this new 110 we're doing. Oh, for sure, that's that's mandatory um, for technically racing boats. You know, allowing power. That, I think that is a little bit unfortunate. Um, you know. I, I guess I, I, I feel like if the rules were written and you couldn't do it, no one would be thinking that way. Once we can use power, then we change our thinking. And it's going to take us a different direction. It'll probably be a faster, scarier boat, but it's different. And whether that's good for the sport or not, I'm not sure. I, you know, I struggle with a lot whether it's what parts like of one business. You yeah. know, when you you start allowing automatic braking, you know, automatic suspension shifting, we can start doing more computerized stuff. Yeah, and is that good or not for the sport? I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it tends to what we've seen, right? Is that it tends to be bad for competition numbers for yeah. participants because oh, people get priced out and for sure, you know, so be it. Um, what else are you working on right now uh, uh, in, in the world of high-performance uh, multi hulls Well, my, my focus for the last couple of years has been really this kind of product, though, because, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to generate, uh, you know, uh, a solid base of production boats, because that's how we make a, you know, a big chunk of our income. Sure. And that gives us the time to go play with toys. Right. One-offs aren't going to pay the bills. No, race boats are fun, but, you know, this, this is our bread and butter. Yeah. So I spent a year in Cape Town, a year ago. Ago, eight months in China last year, helping to develop new new factories with RC to build these boats better. So my interest is really in boat building. Almost for the last two years, it's like upping the game in production boat building and trying to bring more performance into it by changing how we build these boats. Very cool. Uh, one thing I heard, I overheard you talking a minute ago about not just how you build them, but how you troubleshoot them. Yeah. Explain to me your system of, of tracking and, 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 and problem reports that you're getting. Well, you know, these boats are built at about at about a two-a-week pace. 
They build about 100 a year, so that's two a week. All these boats come from Cape Town on their own bottom. Maybe one or two a year get shipped. So at any one time, they're strewn between Cape Town and, and uh, the United States, Tortola, or England, uh, Europe. So the boats have uh, sat phones on. They report in once a day. Every two or three days, we get an Excel file with where the boats are and any issue they may be developing. Really? Yeah. So we have real time. So by the time the boat gets someplace, if it's got an issue, we know what part to send or whatever. But it also gives us real time feedback about what's working and what's not working. So through this issue tracking process, we can see if we have something happen more than once or twice, we go back to the factory, we go into the place, we find the guy. Figure out why there's a pad eye pulling out exactly. of the deck. Exactly. Yeah. Did they forget something? Huh. Are we? Did something change in the laminate? Did the, did the equipment change? So that gives us some real on-time feedback. Does delivering them on their own bottom save money over shipping them? No. No. Well, yes, it does. It's cheaper to deliver them. So it's cheaper and it gets you this problem reporting system that lets you make the boats better. It, it does. It's very cool. It does. It's very cool. It's, you know, uh, you probably heard me say it, you know, their first overnight sales across the Atlantic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big testament to that. Having, having been a delivery skipper in the past, I, I, I understand the problems of that, and, but at the same time, like, it's, you, you, you know you're making it work for the owner when you do it, you know? Yeah. And you can imagine, you know, uh, the skipper flies in, he's going to prep the boat and split in a week. You know, he made day sail at once in Cape Town, and then it's across the Atlantic. Oh yeah, no one wants to stick around. They got to be reliable. You're on the clock. <laughs> exactly. Um, did you design the gunboat 90? Yeah. Tell me about it. We're very excited to see it. Well, it's it's well along its way. It's um, it's gonna it's, it's gonna go in the water in a, a month and a half. I think? Oh no 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 no. It's it's oh, okay. It's much further away. All right. It's like six eight months. Away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, hulls are built, uh, shells basically done, exteriors primed, interiors a lot painted. I was there about six weeks ago, and uh, uh, most of all the composite work is pretty much done by now. So they're they're in the uh, life of uh, priming and sanding and painting, which is a lifetime on those things. So it's like ferrying a building, you know. They're I know, big, I know. Really big. Yeah, yeah. But that'll be a that'll be a big exciting. Boat. How fast is this thing going to be? I mean. Oh, it's probably. Is it, or, is it Orma 60 fast? Is it a. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, it might not be light air oriented down right. there, but yeah, in a breeze it'll it'll be like a 35 knot kind wow. of boat. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's Big. really awesome. A lot of people are. Are you going to be the Heineken this year? I don't know. Actually, one of the 46 owners wants me to go. <laughs> well, I just heard that my wife and I may very well be on a gunboat for the Heineken. So uh, that'd be fun. Hopefully, we'll, hopefully we'll see you there, and uh, and uh, it'll be a good time. Do you know which one? I don't know yet. I just just did, just did you see a Sugar Daddy come through uh, San Diego? I, did, I didn't. No, I don't live there. That Scott lives there. I live in Charleston. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, so if you need anything, if you need anything in Charleston, let us know. All right, Gino, hey, look, thank you. Welcome to On the Water Anarchy. Uh, hopefully we'll do this again at some yeah. cool events and maybe in, in, uh, in Arabia, you know? There you go. Thanks, brother. Okay, thanks. See ya. Yeah.